everyone! So today I am bringing you some tips and tricks for getting rid of books. As many of you know, I am moving at the end of the month and I've gotten rid of quite a few books. I had starting out around somewhere between four and five hundred books and I'm down to 175, which I'm quite happy with and I may push to 150, we will see. Um, because I'm moving it's kind of a little bit of a fire under me to get rid of all those books, but it's been something I've been contemplating for a while. Um, just owning a lot of things is not something I want to do anymore. I, I've kind of taken the step, like taken some steps towards minimalism and just kind of owning what I need and what I'm comfortable with owning. Um, this is just something that I've kind of been on a personal journey for quite a while and the books were kind of the last, the last thing I decided on. Um, it, it's been hard getting rid of books but it's also been really rewarding. I feel like there is a literal physical weight off my shoulders because I'm not going to have to move these books but also kind of a metaphorical weight because I don't feel burdened by my shelves. I don't feel like I can't buy books because I have so many unread books. Um, I have purged a lot of unread books that I just I don't think I'm going to get to and if I do want to read them again I can always take them out from the library or buy them again. Um, you know owning books is a luxury. Not everyone has space for owning books and it can be you can kind of feel like a bad person for not owning a lot of books like the the readers ideals the room full of books but that's not always the reality um, and I find booktube kind of perpetrates this this mentality of owning a lot of books it's all about the acquisition um, and this there's nothing wrong with acquiring a lot of books and owning a lot of books I'm not I'm not calling anybody out on this it's just something that I've noticed that Booktube tends to focus on getting books and you know building new shelves and bookshelf organization rather than just kind of having a smaller library and you know purging as you go along and that's more where I'm headed towards. Um, I've, I've been really loving like uh, Jenny Mustard and Rachel Oss's channel. They're they're big minimalists and they're they're a little bit too sparse for me but I am kind of moving towards that um, also Ashley over at Climb the Stacks does a really good job of like not owning a lot of books. Um, I find her channel really inspiring and just yeah just kind of cutting down on the amount of books that I'm owning has been it's been really interesting. Um, so for whatever reason you need to get rid of books I've got some tips and tricks. Um, the first one is catalog your books. Realize how many you own. Um, I'm a big fan of the Libib app. This is how once I like got down to around the 200 number I cataloged all the books and it's kind of how I've been sorting them and how I've been choosing to what to keep and what to get rid of and knowing exactly the number of books that are in my collection. Um, you can also use uh, Library Thing has one but they have a limit of 200 uh, so that's you know not always the best. Libiv is unlimited. Um, it also has a like it's a built-in barcode scanner for the app which is great. You can also have the web page. Um, I really like the fact that you can share your library with other people and they can kind of like see and I've, I've had Yamini and Ange have kind of been helping me a bit in like choosing what to keep and what to get rid of um, and that's really helpful. I really like that like social function of it. So that was like one of the biggest helps once I got down, once I like got the majority of the books gone, um, that was really helpful for kind of fine tuning my library. The most important step is just get started. Um, it's at first really daunting to get rid of books. We as like book lovers and bibliophiles generally tend to kind of uphold the book as the pinnacle of this great thing, but in reality it's just a thing and we are not defined by the things around us. It Just because I have all these beautiful Fitzgeralds on my shelf doesn't necessarily make me a better person. Yes I've read them all, yes I really like Fitzgerald as an author, not necessarily as a person, but I, it just it doesn't make me a better person owning those books. It, it doesn't and that can sometimes be hard to distance yourself from the like feeling that owning something makes you a better person. We are, our society is very capitalistic, the western society when I say our society, um, and we're, we're trained from a young age to equate our worth with things and it's really hard to kind of divorce yourself from that but once you start to it, it, it is a really good feeling when you're like oh man I have so much more space and like I don't have to maintain these books. I mean Books are fantastic but there were some books that I pulled off my shelf and they were just coated 
with dust and I dust my shelves fairly regularly at least every other week and now I don't have as much to dust and that's actually a really great feeling because I hate cleaning. I don't know about you but cleaning is not something I love to do. There are certain chores that I'm okay with. Laundry, great, easy. I can set it, I can walk away and I can do other things. I'm totally okay with laundry. Dusting? my one I'm up there with like washing dishes as one of my least favorite chores. So the fact that I have less stuff on my shelves that I have to dust, fantastic. Totally really happy about that. Um, some of the questions that I asked myself when I was getting rid of a book was, will I reread this? If I've read it, am I going to reread this? How long ago did I initially read this? Do I remember the story really well? Do I have really fond memories? What was my rating on Goodreads? If it was three stars or less, most likely I'm going to get rid of it because, you know, it was just okay. I'm really good at purging two and one star books like as I go along. As I read them, I'm like, no, I don't need to keep this. But the three star and above books that I'm just kind of like, yeah, this was okay and just keep it on my shelf, you know, and that's I want my shelves to be reflective of books that I absolutely love, that I'm going to reread all the time. It's why I will never get rid of my Austins, because I absolutely love them. I, I reread Austin every year. That's something that's a no-brainer for me to keep. I didn't need two sets, so I got rid of multiples. Um, so that's, that's starting with books that you've read. Books that you haven't read. This is a bit harder because you're like, I've invested money and I haven't really gotten my worth out of them. When, when you've read a book, you're like, okay, I got my money's worth, that's all right. When you haven't read it, you're like, well, I haven't gotten my money's worth out of it, so I kind of want to keep it. But if it's been generally, if it's been sitting on your shelf for over a year, chances are you're not going to read it anytime soon. Let's, let's be honest. And if you do decide you want to read it, you can always take it out from the library. That's getting rid of unread books is really hard, but it will remove that weight from your shoulders. Trust me, it feels so good not to have as many unread books on my shelf. I still have a lot, um, but it just, it feels good to only have books that I actually really want to read and I'm really excited to get to. Um, so that's really important to me. Another thing that can be really hard is if you have really pretty books. As you guys know, I am a big fan of pretty books and buying the prettiest editions and getting rid of some of my collections. I mean, I, I, people have called me ruthless in the comments of some of my unhauls because I mean, I got rid of all my drop caps. I absolutely love the drop caps. I think they're a fantastic design. There's nothing against them. I know there's some, there's a small community of pushback with people who don't like the drop caps, but I think that they're great. I think that they're well built um, as books. They're really readable and getting rid of those, it just, oh, it felt so good because they've been sitting there so long. I'd read all the ones that I wanted to read and it just, it was one of those things that I felt guilty about and you shouldn't feel guilty about your books. Like it's, <laughs> this is one of those things that I'm like, yes, I, I don't feel guilt about getting rid of them because now they're not, they're not, somebody else can go and enjoy them. That's one of the big things that I kind of have to tell myself is somebody else can enjoy these books and I don't have to feel guilty about them sitting on my shelves anymore and I don't have to dust them anymore, which is fantastic. So yeah, those are just some of the like thought processes that I've gone through with getting rid of my books. Um, let me know in the comments down below if you guys have other criteria. Um, for me, basically, it's kind of one on one on like one by one basis. I'll pick the book up. I'll think about it. Do I want to reread this? Do I want to own this? Do I want to read this right now? Like if I pick a book up and I'm like, I don't really want to read this, then I'm most likely going to get rid of it. Um, I try not to let collectability and that kind of thing influence me. I've gotten rid of signed books. I've gotten rid of like collections. That I know have physically pained other people watching me get rid of them, but it's felt really good to get rid of the books. So if you are moving anytime soon or you just feel like you own too many books and your shelves are overstacked, maybe it's time for a purge and give it a try. And let me know in the comments down below if you guys are hoarders or if you just want to get rid of all the books and own a few that you absolutely love. And I will see you guys in another video. Bye!